the uh, demonstration of the little homebrew receiver. I've got on 40 meter CW right now. The band appears to be pretty active. And your BFO does a pretty good job there, varying the pitch. Right now, I'll focus in on the S meter so you can kind of see that it's action as you adjust the RF gain. Okay. The uh, tuning dial on this thing is really cool. Whoever built this, uh, he hand painted all the numbers. So that's pretty neat. And uh, I'll give you a lowdown of the controls. You got your RF gain, antenna tuning, band select, main tuning knob there. Uh, you got a little noise limiter, ABC, uh, audio input there. I haven't tried that. Uh, of course, the BFO, you know, you can switch on and off for CW or AM operation. And it's got standby over here. Uh, if you you'd like to use a separate transmitter with it, and you got your tone control. And I'm going to take this thing outside and give you a really good uh, lowdown of under the hood and underneath, and you won't believe how this thing was constructed. In all my years of radio, this thing uh, for homebrew project is the best I've ever seen. All right, so here we go. Um, give you a little guided tour. Uh, the front panel here is all aluminum construction, and the guy used black wrinkle finished paint on it. This bezel is extruded about a quarter inch aluminum, uh, so the guy obviously had some machining capability. Cabinet's really cool with the lift lid. Okay, and you can see inside here, it's uh, it's all shielded. Real nice punch chassis. Uh, you know the S meter there in the front gear drive. I mean this guy really did it up. And if you look inside, yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a, a Bakelite uh, tuning wheel. And of course all the variable caps and things. Okay, now we'll go back side and get the sun to help me out a little bit here. Okay, so you can see your tube layouts. There is no back panel. This thing's wide open. Uh, you got your AC in here, standby, your antenna fuse and the speaker out. And second here I'll pull the bottom panel and you won't believe that. Alright so pop the bottom panel off and you can see that it was like cut to fit perfectly in this receiver. Just look at this construction, it's unbelievable. I mean like turret boards here, uh, brass tuning flywheel, all these uh, coils, it almost looks military. Uh, some selenium rectifiers up here. I mean th this thing this thing's unbelievable. It really is. I mean, the, the guy was a true artist that built this receiver. So, if you're looking for some really eccentric uh, receiver to have in your collection, this is it. Alright, there was also some uh, documentation here that came with it, including uh, some pictures and some schematics. A lot, a lot of information here um, about the receiver. I think it was originally taken from this article. Here uh, in a QST, it looks like it says uh, October 1955. Uh, although this doesn't look like it, it probably has the same electronics inside. I just noticed uh, this thing had 31 meters on it, so I tuned into WWV, and look at there, it's right on 10 like it should be. So, just thought I'd point that out. On uh, 20 meters. Sideband. Now, you know, this receiver is uh, obviously pretty old, and I'm guessing it'll probably need some alignment. So, you know, be, be sure that uh, you understand how to work on these old rigs before you buy it. You know, this isn't like a brand new Drake off the shelf, okay? Another thing I need to point out, too, is I notice that sometimes when you tune, you see how this dial kind of jumps back and forth like sticking a little bit on the bottom so you might have to pull this bezel and clean that up other than that it seems to be a pretty cool little receiver